Hello everyone and welcome to this special show. I'm Avan Dabash. Today we'll be focusing on non-metros, positive buying sentiments driving festive demand. We want to see whether in Bharat we are actually seeing growth trends picking up in this uh, post-pandemic world and what the outlook is for festive sales in the smaller towns and non-metros. Joining us, we have an illustrious panel to discuss the way forward and in fact, we'll getting, be getting glimpses from different industries and sectors. We have Mr. Harish Bhatia, he's the President of Sales and Marketing at DB Corp. Joining in is Mr. R. S. Sodhi, Managing Director at Amul. We also have Nilesh Gupta, he's the Director at Vijay Sales. Manoj Gadgil is the Vice President of Marketing at Johnson & Johnson Consumer Health India. And we have Mr. Hanirod Haldar, Vice President of Marketing, Com uh, commuter motorcycle scooters and corporate brand at TVS Motor Company. Gentlemen, what a pleasure it is to have you on board. Many thanks for taking time out to join in. Mr. Gadhi, we're going to uh, begin with you and just get a sense as to what the outlook is when it comes to the non-metros and the rural sectors because, you know, you'd gone on uh, record to say that the company is likely to grow due to increased penetration into these markets. What exactly is your sense as to how you're seeing the consumer sentiment here vis-a-vis -vis the urban markets? Uh, thank you, Avan, for asking the question. Um, as a matter of fact, post-COVID uh, lockdown, as the unlockdown has kind of kicked in, uh, we are seeing a definite positive trend on growth demand from smaller towns, from rural areas, for most of the categories that we operate in. Uh, we have seen a resurgence of, de resurgence of demand uh, in our wholesale channel which services uh, many of these smaller town classes. Uh, we are seeing that there is a very clear trend for preference for trustworthy brands and the baseline or the fundamental demand seems to be um, pretty strong, much better than what probably we had started off by anticipating when we had seen the immediate aftermath of the uh, lockdown. Uh, so we are pretty confident and positive in our outlook for many of these smaller towns and we are pretty sure that this demand trend will continue in these places. Okay, so the demand trend is likely to continue. Mr. Bhatia, what about your industry? You know, talking about the circulation, talking about ad revenue growth, you know, you had some top brokerages recently who said that the non-metro presence for most of the print companies is what is leading the comparable recovery as uh, compared to some of the metros. Does this hold true for your company? Definitely, yes. Uh, I am very happy to inform you that the trend of newspaper circulation has picked up much faster after it went down in March in non-metro towns. We are already around 90% of recovery of uh, since the, uh, it went locked down. So we are approximately 90% of what we went down in March. And I'm very sure that in the next uh, few weeks, we will be back to our normal. I think uh, one of the major reasons for this has also been that the spread in the smaller towns is much lesser than in the bigger towns. The reason is that you have high rise societies in the bigger towns and society generally decides that, you know, the newspaper will not come and hence you, you, they are, the vendors are not allowed. This happens in all the metros. I'm also staying in metro. So I know that these are the trends which are going on here. But in the smaller towns, you live independent houses, you have small localities, and you have, you know, most of the societies are also not very big. So there it cannot be holded. And that is why the newspaper is almost back to 90 to 95% in some areas to its normal circulation. And that is also showing uh, in the revenues also. If you ask me, I think in the month of August and now in September also, we would be around 80, 85% of our retail business. And we would be around more than 90, 95% of our response business. The response business, which is considered to be the backbone of the newspaper across, because if the newspaper is circulating and the response business is good, that means the people are really reading the newspaper very well. So the response business shows that it is back to normal. The circulation number shows they also further add to it. And of course, the revenue what revenues are also showing up. So I'm very pretty confident that the coming up season, which is a festival season in these markets, 
in tier two and tier three, this is these are the bigger celebrations. I would say because for them these are some of their most treasured, you know, celebrations they wait for. So I'm very hopeful that the coming season is going to be very very good in these markets with the signs which are already shown in the month of August and September. Okay, so across all parameters, and I'm going to come right back to you to talk about the festive trends. But Mr. Sodhi, let's get in your opinion because as a sector, the dairy uh, business in India, it's a source of livelihood for millions of rural people. You know, you've got small marginal landless farmers as well who rely, of course, on dairying for their livelihood. But just want to understand in terms of the demand, in terms of sentiment as well, would you concur with our panelists that there has been steady growth even in the non-metros for dairy products? So you're right, uh, dairy is a part of food. And during COVID lockdown also, there was a tremendous increase in demand for the good food, food with natural ingredients, food which are immunity booster, food like uh, Mr. Manoj mentioned, trustworthy brand, packed, branded, but available and affordable. Because Amul or dairy meets those requirements of people lucky. Now, post-COVID, what we are looking for is basically, first is sustaining that growth. Because what has happened, Horeka, which was an important part of food, around 10 to 15% was more or less closed. But that demand shifted to the household. And household means good brands, trustworthy brand, and affordable. Whereas in Horeka, it may be not. Horeka may be using loose, unpacked, locally available, or sometimes in dairy analog products. So, but what we are looking is with the opening of the economy, opening of this Horeka, another 10 to 15% more demand will rise. And moreover now, tier two and tier three cities, or even the villages, not demanding packed cheese, packed ghee, Pack paneer. I mean, in spite of Horeka closing down, our household demand for cheese, paneer just doubled up and it is going up. So we are very happy. But there has been change in uh, geographies or uh, channels. I mean, whereas modern trade reduced considerably, the general trade increased, but maximum growth has come in the e commerce three times more. And tier two, three, three small places, everybody was refrigerated, everybody was deep freezer. So it's good for the food, but good food, trustworthy brand, packed brand. And also one more thing which we have seen is consumer is now demanding more of local food, locally purchased, locally processed, locally available. So our biggest challenge is how to make Amul is a local brand. Oh, yes, indeed. And, you know, devoured by everyone uh, countrywide. Uh, Mr. Gupta, let's talk about the appliances and the consumer electronics industry. You know, that has seen um, a, a push back due to the lockdown and now strong uh, double digit growth is anticipated in uh, the festive season because that's generally where you get a lot of your revenues from. What are you penciling in by way of growth within the urban versus the rural India? In fact, uh, in consumer durable, uh, during the lockdown, there was a total uh, sale loss. And we were also very skeptical once it starts whether people will be having jobs or not. Will they spend on television? Will they spend on the appliances? But uh, I think the scenario emerged once we opened up the stores. And what we have seen is people are flocking to the stores and they're buying. Because what has happened is in the two months of lockdown, more than two months of lockdown, they were actually locked in their homes. And they realized now they need to do up their homes in a proper way. They need a better air conditioner. They need a larger refrigerator. They need a bigger television. And then you have work from home and learn from home. So everybody needs a computer. Computer all of a sudden, which was a market which was not growing in the last three, four years, we have seen a growth of 100%. Now, coming back to the rural and the urban, I think this is one category where the divide is not there as of now. We are seeing equal growth happening in our non-metro markets also. And uh, looking at Diwali, I think this year Diwali will be a little different. In the sense, people will not buy because Diwali is around. People will buy because they need I think, I think after food, 
we have become the most important part in everybody's life and that's why we are seeing a growth already we are seeing even in the, the month of september we are seeing a double digit growth already and that's in spite of the fact there is a little shortage on the supply side okay fair enough uh, mr haldar what's the sense that you're getting because a lot of uh, you know companies within the auto sector have gone on record to say that smaller towns um rural india bharat really is where you're seeing the true uh, growth within the auto sector and that's looking a lot more promising within the two wheeler space is this something that you too have noticed as a trend it's very true that the rural sector right now whether it is from a more recent sentiment of the impact of covid or the bountifulness of the harvest kind of money that's coming into their hands by there there's a natural buoyancy that's there that's the good part that's driving up rural on the other hand there is also consciousness building on not taking mass transit or those services have been impaired and that's also but that doesn't take away the need for mobility so that's also needing leading to a lot of people needing a personal mobility solution in urban locations because you still have schools shut down you still have you know a lot of offices working with large segments of work from home that transit demand is not fully back yet but in the rural where it is far more day to day far more every day i think that need is far more pressing so there you have seen a very distinct comeback that has happened i won't say it is anywhere near to where uh, mr gupta's uh, double digit growth is but i'm hoping like everything it's a cycle and uh, you know while people are at home they watch uh, the tv and then they need to go out and get to work and then they use uh, a two wheeler and uh, go out there and buy a uh, amul butter can pick up <laughs> and uh, if they're still working from home, who knows 9 months later uh, they need a lot of uh, baby products as well <laughs> but yeah rural is doing better rural is doing better and all of the other businesses quite well mr gadgil uh, you know i just want to get right back to you and uh, get in a sense as to which segments it is within your business or which product mm. categories is it that you have seen strong mm. growth within thank you uh, again i think um, there are two or three themes that i want to talk about so first is many of our categories uh, though they are not uh, apps uh you know uh life saving kind of an end of it but they're pretty essential categories required for everyday use and for a very specific purpose so whether we you look at feminine hygiene products whether you look at baby care products whether you look at more healthcare solutions uh out of our pc uh, segment uh these are categories that we are seeing an absolute steady consumption pattern from a pure, uh, from an overall category perspective what we are observing is that brand preference and uh, you know what we used to use that see definite shift and which is showing up across our segments across all our key categories that we operate in. uh when i look at my more recent growth uh, trend whether it is starting from the therapy onwards a very strong double digit growth across most of the segments that we see and that speaks of obviously the strength of the brand more importantly the category itself being very very essential the second piece we are seeing is uh, that what is being bought is probably evolving a little, little bit so for example i will just make the distinction that you know, small town and rural is seeing a much faster growth uh, i think the kind of packs that sell there the value packs are definitely kind of driving the growth there but when i look at my uh, urban sales uh, which are going very very strongly in big pack that the packs when that's also helping us grow the same categories different behaviors of different consumers are helping us grow across the categories and those segments and those categories where we have kind of worked hard to establish a more healthcare view uh, a doctor recommendation i think there the strength of the category itself holds up the growth very very well Okay, when it comes to healthcare and doctor recommended, that 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 would be quite inevitable. Um, Mr. Bhatia, I just want to talk about the overall digital mix as well because the last time we interacted with Mr. Agarwal, his view was that it's not just a shift to digital, but that actual newspapers and digital can coexist. 
Do you think that this, um, you know, shift to digital presents a bit of a challenge in the smaller towns or has there been a complete adaptation to both the mediums? So, uh, actually, if I, if I have to tell you that uh, because uh, there is so much of activity going around on uh, COVID and around, so while newspaper, as I said, we are already 90% of the circulation, is giving a very exhaustive coverage of uh, an analysis along with the information that is coming. So from the digital, there are updates which are happening whole day. So I'm able to see some updates, what's happening around, what's happening in the country, what's happening abroad, those things are happening. But when it comes to a information which came yesterday and what is the analysis of that information, how that information is useful to me, how I can use it further to take care of me and my family. All those things are, you know, brought down to me by newspaper. So while digital has helped, you know, maybe uh, to update myself because it is like, it's, it's like happening a very intense activity around me and my life. But uh, newspaper is what I look, look forward to next day in the morning. So I think it has helped us to, to a large extent. It has not replaced us anywhere. So while we have seen a surge in our digital activity, we have a digital being, there is a surge in that activity. But uh, because the newspapers have bounced back faster in our markets, we believe that this is not a shift, it is an add-on. So anything which is add-on is only strengthens further. So we have a newspaper and then we have a digital wing. They are both strengthening each other rather than replacing each other. So I would say it's, it's a very good phenomenon. Way forward is good that it is only going to strengthen ourselves. All right, let's get in some closing comments from each of our panelists then. And Mr. Gadgil, what is the outlook in terms of the festive demand? Do you think that it's going to naturally, um, you know, outpace in the non-metros versus the metros? What are you uh, working on by way of any special offers, promotions, etc.? Again, as we look look at the year that's ahead of us, it's the traditional festive season. A lot of uh, positive sentiment, and it shows up in sales across categories. I think, and we are hoping and expecting a similar outcome in this year. Uh, this, this is also the time where a lot of the channels also invest in their promotional days and kind of shows up on e-commerce. So we expect that channel to do really, really well for us, uh, for many of our categories. And some of them are like the end of the business, where there is a premium skincare, premium baby care. I think these will see a natural momentum during the festive season. And for our core categories, which are not necessarily driven to a festive season per se because of their nature of usage, I think just the fact that across the board there is an accumulation of promotional events in this calendar, we will see the upsurge naturally on uh, our categories and our brands. The second piece is, I think, as we are looking at uh, kind of progressing and as the FMCG categories have kind of uh, seen a clear resurgence, so has been brand building initiatives, so has been marketing in investments. And all of these will also result in a more engaged consumer, which will also have its own positive outcomes for us in the uh, fourth quarter for us as we go into the end of the year. So overall, very positive and very uh, hopeful about all our categories, the growth of the fourth quarter, focus on both the high end or the upper end, as Anirudh was for us, talking about that the premium side of our business will continue to grow where the consumer base has not seen any impact on either the income or the affluence. As a matter of fact, there is a greater sense of being more purposeful of, uh, on what they buy, being more deliberate about the choices that they make, and we'll see a positive growth there. And equally in the smaller towns, where there is a willingness to invest more in uh, the right brand choices, find brands that they can trust in the categories which are close to them, day-to-day -day existence will again continue to be a very strong growth uh, in the smaller and the uh, uh, rural part of our businesses. So overall, from a change in perspective, I'm very, very hopeful and confident about the end of the year as we are. All right, hopeful and confident. Would you use those adjectives, Mr. Bhatia, to uh, you know describe what you're expecting going forward in terms of value propositions to really create that holistic consumer experience? Because we're seeing the newspaper size only getting uh, bigger and bigger day by day, so there is a lot of promise. 
Yeah, definitely. I think the coming festival season, it's a great opportunity for all the marketers and uh, all the biggies here in this forum and across the country to use this opportunity in tier two, tier three towns. And as I said earlier also that, uh, and, as, uh, and uh, Heather mentioned that, you know, because of uh, agriculture income is growing in the country, it is the double the growth of the last GDP declared. So with all these positives which are being reflected in tier two, tier three towns, it's time for the marketers to use this opportunity and ignite the emotions in their end consumers to so catch it. I think the more they do, the more they communicate, the more promotions they do, the more results they will they will get it. And because the consumers are now because of festival season are also waiting that there will be some offer, some promotions coming from the brands which are which are very active during this season. So I'm looking forward to a lot of uh, action in this festival season. And I'm very hopeful that the results will be very, very positive for all of us here. Yes, fingers crossed. And Mr. Sodhi, do you concur? Are you sharing the same sentiments? What are you penciling in for festival yeah. growth? Any festival, any religion, food is must. And actually, we eat more food, more fat and protein rich food. So, any festival, we are very bullish. But especially for this festival season, one category where we are very, very positive, optimistic is packed sweets. We are investing a lot because with e-commerce coming back and with naturally they are going to sell more of uh, packed sweets. Similarly, modern trade also and consumer are going to buy more of packed. So we are very, very bullish about new category sweets as well as the new category, which is also multiplying is the chocolates. Besides the usual milk, cheese, butter, ghee, that is usual thing, any future, it will grow. But it is not only metro, food is across every geography. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm sure a lot of those packaged goods will see uh, demand spiking. Mr. Gupta, what is your outlook? How optimistic are you on the festive season demand? Which are the product, product categories that you think will fly off the shelves? In fact, uh, if, uh, as Mr. Sodhi said, if food is going to become so big, then uh, I think uh, storage of the food is refrigerators, so that has to grow. <laughs> and cooking of the food is all the gas appliances and OTGs, that also has to grow. Uh, jokes aside, I think that this festival is going to be really good for across. <laughs> and uh, as I said earlier, it's for our category, more than festival buying, I think this is the first time in festival where people will buy because they need the products. They're going to be more at home. And uh, so they are going to buy more sensibly the products which they need. And uh, I think this festival will be a different in terms of uh, how the consumers purchase uh, and think and buy. But most important is from a growth perspective, it's going to be one of the best festival time I feel uh, this one. For sure. So, Mr. Hadar, last but not least, just your take, because it goes without saying that the festive season does have a lot to do with, um, you know, a growth in uh, the auto sector. So, in terms of percentage of growth, what are you penciling in now? Um, let me let me tell you what is positive. What would drive up uh, of all the points that were mentioned uh, by the panelists? Each of them are valuable. There has been a postponement of demand. There have been a lot of demand that should have come in. And fortunately, unlike some categories, mobility demand is not perishable. That is something that we carry forward. We are hoping that a big part of that demand will come back into the market. There has been a lot of wait and watch that's happened. And typically, when this happens, it's like a spring that gets compressed. Festivals are when that typically gets released. So all the abstinence, all the postponement that happens in festive periods typically get released. That's all the good thing that is happening, why it should be good. There, uh, hopefully, with as, as, as business picks up and everybody starts talking, a lot of the people where the wages have been impacted or jobs have been impacted will start also coming back and those will also start sparring demand. These are all reasons for positivity. What could go wrong? There are some pockets in which the impact is rampant and uh, causing localized disruptions. Now, if that localized disruption starts becoming more rampant, so if you have Janta curfews, you have uh, individual state governments which are 
shutting down. If that phenomenon comes and hits in the period of it, that will be something that will be disastrous because it's not only about demand of that market, but if that is a is a supplier uh, market, then it upsets the entire supply chain. So that could lead to a lot of disruptions. So I would say that all in all, we are very optimistic, we are very bullish, we are very buoyant. But there is a degree of caution built in saying that there are a number of these factors that we need to keenly watch out for. Because unlike any other year when I would have given you a flat out answer saying that festive period is amazing, let's just go out there and do it and it's a double digit no matter what. This year, we are hoping that it will be good and strong. But there are possible derailers which we need to be conscious about, collectively work towards to ensure that we need to get the economy back and playing and avoid any sort of derailment in the short term. I think you summed that up perfectly and that's probably the sentiment that all of the panelists share that had it been another time we would have gone out there and said we're super optimistic but right now cautiously optimistic perhaps is the view. All the very best and thank you so much gentlemen for sharing your outlook. Thanks for being with us and thanks for watching.